as I was as I was getting in bed last night in this really weird voice, she Disgusting. says to me, "You're, huh?" I didn't want you to talk about you going into bed, but go on. Yeah, no, and then and then and then she said she said you're drunk, and I said, "How do you know?" Uh, and she said, "Because you live next door." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody for us on Patreon. Follow us for official Twitter account. Subscribe and hit that what? The like button. Yep. Uh, because the clitoris of the algorithm. <laughs> kind of true. Uh, <laughs> tell me this doesn't look like jabby. Wait, where, what, what are you showing me here? Oh, oh, <laughs> kind of that does. actually does look quite a, quite a bit like Jabby. I don't know who that is. You guys, it's one of part of the Tamil cards. I don't know who that is. I, I don't, I don't recognize him, but it, it kind of looks like Jabby a little bit. It does look Anyways, like Jabby. Anyways, uh, today, um, I just saw it was on my floor and I was like, hmm, I don't know why I have a Jabby card here. Uh, <laughs> did it come up for you, the video? Did it switch? Uh, it always comes up for me. I, 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 I doubt that. I don't lie. Did the video come up for you? Oh, yeah. Does it say something about how yeah. Tejas... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So this is a video, a new video that came out about a month ago on this channel. It's how Tejas will change the game for IAF, which is Indian Air Force. Um, and it's, I think, a, a new fighter jet for them. It's called the Tejas. Okay. And I know a while ago, well, we never reacted to it, but I saw on Twitter the, the PM, like, actually rode in it. Like, he rode in the back of a... Uh, of the Teja, like I saw, obviously the actual pilot was flying it, but he rode in the back of it, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, have you ever? Uh, obviously, you've never flown in one. Have you ever been in one though, like a, a an actual fighter jet? I've I've been outside of them and touched them, but I've never sat in one nor been up in the air in one. I would love that. I, obviously, I've never been. A, that I think very few people get that that privilege. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you basically rare. have to either be in the Air Force and a select few, or be the Prime Minister of India. Uh, right, um, or Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I've <laughs> I've sat inside a fighter jet. It was at a, a, a air shows before because my dad's military, so I've been to a lot, and he knows a lot of people. So I've yeah, been able to. Sit, I've seen the air shows. I've been able to sit in them, older ones at least, probably. Um, but uh, apparently, the Tejas is one of India's newest. Uh, fighter jets, and I think it's something they produce as well. So I think it's it's their product, um, okay. and so it's probably like their movies. It probably costs significantly less to make, and yeah. uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Because obviously, what what uh, the United States spends on their military, and what everybody else in the world spends on the military, is famously insanely different. <laughs> Um, (laughs) we spend way too much on our military, everybody, uh, in case that's not known. I think we spend more than like the next five to nine countries combined, I think is what is something that was right. Yeah. (laughs) And it's always funny to me that whenever the United States needs money for something militarily, it's just an instantaneous congressional approval and money just appears. But you need money for things like infrastructure or helping Healthcare. the homeless. Forget it. Yeah, we spend a, a we spend some some trillions of dollars every year on the military, and then well, we're like, hey, uh, can we uh, have some healthcare? And like, we can't afford that. <laughs> Come on, it's think, Corbin. What's more profitable, True. war or healthcare? Well, for the government, war obviously. Do you make more money helping the homeless, or do you make more money bombing poor people? Yeah, well, you know, that sounds like freedom to me. Am I right? Oh, uh, brother. <laughs> anyways, so this is about obviously one of their new fighter jets. It's a little it's called a sh- little short film. This is cool. Um, so ready? I, I saw Tejas and my my thought was, how the heck? <laughs> He's from Texas. So if you if you're... reference, my reference point after nine and a half years in San Antonio yeah. is how's that going to help them in the Indian Air Force, Bob? <laughs> There's a very famous Tejas thing in, in, in Texas, everybody. So if you're yeah. from Texas, shout out to you. Here we go. (laughs) Tejas. The Game Changers. Long ago, 
amidst the echoes of history, a resounding truth emerged. What a great voice. You cannot win a war like with Air Force and Shah Rukh Khan together. <laughs> but you are sure to lose it without one. Imagine a force that transcends boundaries, not merely safeguarding airspace, but possessing the relentless prowess to strike fiercely into the heart of adversaries. Enter the realm of fighter jets. Who's the Vanguard, the pivotal tool shaping the destiny of air forces worldwide. Today, within the Indian Air Force's formidable fleet reside Russian stalwarts like the Sukhoi 30 MKI, the venerable MiG-21 and MiG-29, alongside the British Jaguars and the French Mirage 2000 and Rafale fighters. Yet, amid this ensemble stands a beacon of distinction, the homegrown warrior, HAL Tejas. Tejas isn't Tejas. just an aircraft, it's the linchpin destined to become the very backbone of the IAF for decades to come. It's not only the present, but also the visionary architect of our aerial dominion. In one resounding word, Tejas is a game changer for the IAF. Here's why. Firstly, it's price tag. <laughs> Tejas, an advanced 4 to 4.5 generation multi-role aircraft, defies the norms of cost, standing substantially more affordable than its foreign counterparts. That makes sense. The Tejas Mark I emerges at a mere $30 million, <laughs> while the more advanced Mark I-A, equipped with cutting-edge ISA radar and myriad improvements, stands at an estimated $42 million flyaway, 30 to 50% cheaper than similarly equipped foreign aircraft. Consider the cost of ownership. Importing hundreds of foreign fighters not only burdens the immediate budget, but imposes an enduring weight in terms of life cycle cost. The reliance on original equipment manufacturers for subsystems incurs higher long-term expenses, subjecting the IAF to potential price hikes or even supply refusals in dire times. Safety becomes paramount. Tejas boasts an impeccable record, witnessing no crashes or major mishaps since its inception. Nice. Despite undertaking thousands of sorties and active service hours, its high availability stands as a testament. Exceptional serviceability and minimal turnaround time ensure a fleet ever ready for immediate action, maintaining operational readiness at all times. The promise for modernization, its indigenous origin grants us the knowledge and autonomy to continuously enhance the aircraft's capabilities, integrating weapons and systems seamlessly without external dependencies or additional costs. The ease of replacing losses, essential in any conflict scenario. Tejas facilitates a quicker replacement of lost aircraft, acknowledging the inevitability of losses during warfare. Reduce reliance. Tejas increasing indigenous content significantly diminishes dependence on external suppliers, securing critical systems and components within the nation's grasp, ensuring operational autonomy. Yet, beyond its tactical prowess, lies a grander legacy. Tejas has catalyzed an entire aviation ecosystem, paving the way for an indigenous aviation industry. HAL's leadership integrates the final aircraft, while components sourced from public and private firms foster a thriving industry, generating thousands of jobs and laying the foundation for future aerospace endeavors. In the skies, Tejas isn't just a fighter. It's a testament to India's soaring ambition, resilience, 
and a beacon illuminating a path towards self-reliance and aviation excellence. It's not just changing the game for the IAF. It's reshaping the very destiny of Indian aviation. Hold on. Narration, Ravi Kapoor. Hmm. Have we heard him before? Because his voice sounded so familiar to me. Um, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, very A much. little bit. Um, it makes one, one, obviously I, I don't know a ton about planes outside of what everybody else does. I've seen like, obviously the insane ones they have now. So I don't know if this is like the ones that like, the United States has that like can literally fly horizontally. Like they can just, st yeah. like it's, it's kind of insane what they can do now, but it makes sense that India would be producing their own things. One you have in terms of brain power you <laughs> you have literally some of the smartest people on the planet that most of the the rest of the world tries to import yeah. to the, to there obviously with yeah. with engineering and the, the amount that uh, india produces engineers obviously so the the, yeah, the, the brain sure. power is there the the cheap manpower is also there so it, it kind of just it makes sense that they would produce stuff like this how it holds up to everything else i don't know um so. yeah i it was a nice video i would have loved to have known a little bit more about its specifications yeah, yeah, yeah. And its payload and uh its speed it looks like it's a really zippy short distance very hard to you know as far as like if you're getting into a firefight in the sky that thing looks like it's quick and, and maneuverability is insane i'd love them to just know you know, it's range, if it's predominantly specified for home defense or if it's for aircraft carrier to go out. And, uh, you know, pr obviously, India's military is always and forever defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they are never the aggressors. Uh, so uh, very, very cool. My favorite thing about that is seeing them rely on themselves for the creation of their own air aircraft and military stuff. How many aircraft carriers does India have, do you think? No clue. No idea. Yes. Seven. Two. Wow. That actually doesn't surprise me. I was being really optimistic when I jumped to that height. Well, we that doesn't surprise I, me. We have like 12, something like that. Oh, we might yeah. have more than that. I don't know. Yeah, I knew they'd have less than we do, but I didn't realize they would only have two. Now, wait a minute. Is that in their total arsenal or just homegrown? India demonstrates naval strength with dual aircraft carrier exercise. India has two aircraft carriers. Wow. Yeah, so it looks like they have two aircraft carriers. That doesn't include, like, um, non-aircraft carriers, like like uh, naval ships and stuff like that. Right. Do um, they have submarines? Yeah, I'm sure. Um, how many aircraft? Does USA have how many underwater military bases? Eleven do you think there might be underwater. 11? Yeah, anything militarily where there's actual not just submarines but actual like places. Why, why where would they can be? Why would they need a military base down there? They, they can virtually military base from anywhere, so that I don't see the point. In... Well, we, they can. It would be largely undetectable compared to any other place. No, and I've because, heard I've heard from an FBI a former FBI agent that there are really these kinds of things. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, there's probably so many different insane things out there, right? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff we don't even know about for sure. Uh, I wonder also is is this something that they were able to incorporate in in fighter? I hope so. Me too. Um, That'd be cool. But I don't know when fighter took place. It looks modern, but I don't know if it is modern. Yeah, it does look um, modern. And if this is like a new, new aircraft, like came out this year, maybe not. Um, uh, so I, I, I hope so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward. Looks cool. I'm looking forward to fighter because I don't. We've never seen an Indian Air Force movie, right? 
Indian military no, movies. We've, we've seen, seen a lot of are, military films, but not one that's specific to that well, branch of the military. Well, no. <clears throat> not that had to... Do, I think they were in the Air Force because I think... Was it in Veer Zara was SRK a Air Force pilot? Yeah, he was, right? Because he dropped yes, down in the helicopter, yes. right? I believe that is correct. Yeah, and then... Was it Air Force or was it a different one with Rithik and um, Laksh- Lakshya? Oh, Lakshya. I thought that was Army. Is it Army? It's hard to tell because obviously every branch actually has like helicopters and, 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 and yeah. things of that nature. Uh, Coast Guard has helicopters, Air Force, uh, Army. They, they, all, they all got them. Um, but obviously if it's a fighter jet, it'll obviously be the air force um right do you have any military in your family um past generations not current generation mm. like your dad's yeah. generation or before that no my dad my my dad uh, was 4f for vietnam which made him really happy um and um my 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 two uncles my mom's brothers they both served in vietnam my uncle joey was a a helicopter gunman in Vietnam. Oh, nice. And then my great, great grand, well, my grandfather, Vinnie Gallo, he fought in Korea. My great, great grandfather, Vincenzo Cacacci fought in world war one and tried to enlist in world war two, but he was too old. Um, so there's, there's a lot of military service in my family, but nobody in the current generation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, me and my brother, my older brother, who's my full brother, Wes, um, destroyed like a, a military line. So my dad's military. His dad was military. His dad was military. His dad was military. I think his dad was military as well. Wow. <laughs> and we just fucked it up. <laughs> He's a musical theater major and I dropped out of college. <laughs> Making him proud. <laughs> Talk about being a rebel. Yeah. Military, military, <laughs> military, military, musical theater. <laughs> I love it. Um, like the most useless degree on the planet. Uh, <laughs> uh, my no degree is more more useful than his uh, musical theater degree. Uh, yeah. Um. Anyways, that was great. If there's other videos uh, that are more informational about it or other other things uh, that we can react to, uh, I know obviously Republic Day is coming up, uh, and so I'm yep. guessing another. Um, what is that parade called that they do? The Hell March, right? Um, is that what it's called? I think that's the actual name of it. I think, I think so. I think they call it the Hell March. Um, that they do every year is coming up. So, anyways, if there's other videos, let us know down below. Just-